Här har vi en uh, annan. This is a plexiglass sandbana. tank with sand can, in which I can demonstrate groundwater flow. It has an inlet up here where I have created a small lake. In the outlet, water is drained from here by a tube to the outlet of the tank. The outlet level is defined by this adjustable level. The water circulates by a pump in a closed system, keeping a constant level here, defining the inlet level. The difference between the inlet and outlet levels is now about six centimeters. We have several piezometers along this side. They consist of tubes open towards the tank with a nylon mesh to prevent sand to enter the tubes. The water level in the tubes shows the total head at the point of intake. With this tank, we will look at the potential field along the flow. By measuring the total potential in all these points, given by the water level in the tubes, we can draw equipotential lines. From this, we can draw flow lines knowing that water is flowing perpendicularly to the equipotential lines. In this way, we can get a picture of the flow lines through the groundwater system. When this is done, we will make a tracer test. Colored water is injected at some points in the groundwater, and we will look at the movement of these traces. The uppermost tube has its water level here. The deeper tubes have slightly lower water levels. This shows that there is a downward driving force for the flow, and that the flow has a downward component. Also here, the level of the uppermost tube is slightly higher than the deeper ones. Here they are about the same level, and here the deeper tube starts to be a little higher, and we clearly can see that the deepest tube has the highest water level. And here in the discharge part, the deepest tube has its level about one centimeter above the water table of the lake. The water level of the lake reflects the total potential at the bottom. The bottom is a potential surface. Now I shall measure all levels. 32.3 centimeters, 32.5, 33.4, water level 33.6. I have chosen the bottom of the tank as reference level for the potential. That means that the height coordinate Z is equal to zero at the bottom. We now have the total potential in all these points, and we will look at them in some detail for obtaining the potential field, and from that the flow lines. Now I will, somewhat schematically, draw equipotential lines from these numbers, and then draw flow lines crossing them at right angles. I interpolate between the values. Here, 33.4, 32.6. The line for 33 goes midway between these points. 32.8, 33.4 give 33 somewhere here. We know that the equipotential lines always meet the wall at right angle. The wall is a flow line. There is no flow through the wall, so the line goes perpendicularly from the wall. Another equipotential surface is a lake bottom, having the potential 33.6. Now I can draw the line for 33 centimeters. 
Så den representerar 33 cm. Then we take 32. 32.6, 31.7, about here. About here, a little closer to this one. And here it passes through the point. Nästa yta går på något sätt så här ner. Så kommer här i rätt vinkel mot väggen. 31 is rather easy, parting two points and a little beside here. Thirty-one centimeters. Thirty is somewhat closer to thirty point two. It is also almost vertical. Vertical, in stort sett så. Thirty. 29 midway between these. 29. Now the lines begin to curve in the opposite way. We don't have so much information for 28, so I take 28.5. Between these, about here and somewhere here. I make this line dotted since it represents only a half centimeter. We don't know so much about 28, but it goes between this point and the lake. So now we have lines for equal total potential, roughly interpolated between the measured values. Now I can draw flow lines perpendicular to these lines. I start in the middle and make equal distances between the lines and I know they are perpendicular to the potential lines. This is one flow line. I go backward and it comes up here. Come up dit. Och den här gick upp här så. The flow lines look something like this. If I have drawn them in this way, with the same distance between the lines here, where the lines are roughly parallel, the distance between the lines shows the velocity of water. The closer the lines, the larger is the velocity. The same volume per time passes between two lines. Water moves quickly up here and slowly down here, which I hope we will see in the tracer test. We can also draw the groundwater table. It's the level where the total potential equals the height, Z. Pressure equals to zero. Z33 meets the 33 line here. With that 32 or sin nivå. 32 here and so on. Of course you can do this carefully on a graph paper or with a computer, but I do it roughly here. Here is the groundwater table. From the head measurements we have obtained equipotential lines. These red lines, and in right angles to them, I draw the flow lines 
from the inlet lake to the outlet lake. Since I draw them separated by about the same distance, where the lines were horizontal in this case, we can read the velocity from the lines. When the distance between them is large, the velocity is small, and where it is small, the velocity is high. The water moves very slowly in the corners. Our tracer test will not show exactly the same pattern, since the outlet is not in the lake itself, but in a well below the lake, distorting the pattern a little. But I hope you will see the basic principle. I will inject the fluorescent tracer, sodium fluorescein, in the beginning of the flow path, and then we can follow the tracer clouds. The movement is quite slow, so we have increased the film speed. One more injection.